Hello and welcome to my channel. This is a uh, radio node, Heltec V3, 868 megahertz with a little antenna on it. <clears throat> and I plugged it into my Proxmox server that I've been using in this series of videos. On Proxmox is plugged into a USB port here. And the idea is to pass that through to a virtual machine, which I can then use for reticulum mesh chat. So let's switch over to the uh, desktop for this machine and do that. <clears throat> so there's the desktop and <clears throat> this is my notes. <laughs> In fact, um, I'm going to pass through that <clears throat> um, Heltec V3. So let's have a look at the virtual machine, which is here. <clears throat> yep, that's it. And it's running. This is where we're going to get the software from later on. And before I do anything else, let's have a look at the control panel for the Proxmox server, <coughs> which is here. And I wanted to remind myself I've done a backup. If you uh, click on the backup tab, <coughs> it's usually it's, I do it without the machine running. It's currently running because of the green arrow. You just click backup now, and then you uh, take a snapshot using this compression, press the button, and it does a backup. And Although it's a 24 gigabyte partition, <clears throat> the size of the backup is about 6.8 gigabytes because it's compressed and also because the partition is not full of data. I'm sure there's still a lot of zeros in there. So it's backed up and in case anything goes wrong, it can restore from this backup. There's one thing that's worth mentioning about restoring from backups and or maybe even transferring them to other machines, which I do sometimes. This file, you can uh, put it on a USB stick or an external drive for, as a, a backup of a backup. <clears throat> you can uh, then copy paste it onto another machine and spin it up as a virtual machine and it will work. I often do this but you have to watch out for the MAC address because it'll have the same MAC address and if you have two machines in one network with the same MAC address then you're going to run into problems so you have to actually manually change it. Um, here is the MAC address and you can change that <clears throat> to your heart's content. Just change one of the digits and then it won't clash with another machine having the same one. Anyway, that was a sidetrack. Um, so the machine is running, and that's the console of it, which I'm going to look at using the Spice Viewer because it gives me a nice full screen display like this. If I type LSUSB, it'll show me what's present on this machine. <clears throat> All it's found is a, a root hub for USB. It hasn't shown the um, plugged in R node yet because I haven't port forwarded it. Um, to the USB port. So how do we do that <clears throat> on this machine here, which I'm using? We go to hardware and then click add and USB device. And I want to use a USB to port. I'm going to pass through a full port, double click in there and you can see here it is listed. That number corresponds to the particular USB port on that main board <clears throat> on the back of the machine. And this is the UART chip that's in the uh, Heltec V3 radio node, so I'm just going to click on that <clears throat> and add it, and that's now added. So hopefully now, when I go back here and I do LSUSB again, oh look at that, <clears throat> it's found it. So there's the Silicon Labs UART chip has been added and is visible. That's a good sign. Um, I need to check a few things, um, because it's there as a USB device, it should also be as a TTY device, so let's do LS minus AL slash dev slash tty star on the Swiss keyboard. Whoa. <clears throat> so it's listing all of the um, teletype devices, tty devices connected. And it's usually the last one here. It is tty usb 0. So that's my Heltec um, <clears throat> radio note plugged in. Um, you'll notice if you plug in, a, for example, a rack 4631, then it's given the name tty acm in capital 0, not USB 0. So it may be different depending on what uh, what kind of radio interface you use. Anyway, that works. Um, and you can see here <coughs> that uh, it's a member of a group called Dialout. And I think that my user here, who's also called user, <coughs> to avoid confusion, is not a member of that group. Let's have a look by typing groups. Whoops, that was the Spanish person. Groups. Um, no, user is not a member of that group. So I have to uh, use the command, <clears throat> which is, I've stored it here. It's easier just to uh, copy paste it from some notes. Here we are. <clears throat> I need to add my user 
called user into the dialog group. So let's do that, copy that, and then paste it into here with Control Shift V uh, password. Now he's been added. <clears throat> and I think I would also need to do a reboot. Yep, because it's not actually in there yet. So I need to either log out and log in again or reboot. So I'll do that and be back in a second. I tried to log out and log in again and it didn't actually add the user to the groups yet <clears throat> called dial out. So then I did a reboot. And to do a reboot, you just type reboot, press enter, which I'm not going to do now. And um, if we then look in the using the groups command, you can see that user is now a member of the dial out group. So that means that you can use that uh, UART chip in the Heltec V3 radio node. So what do I need to do next? I need to download the software. And <clears throat> I've already got the page open. I'll put the link in the description below. Um, on GitHub, Liam Cottle's Reticulum Mesh Chat program. This is the current version. You see it's got the new uh, RNS version here. <clears throat> Latest one, very good. We need to download the app image. So we just click on this app image. Um, oh, there are Windows versions if anybody wants to use Windows. Very good. So here's the Linux app image being downloaded, 150 megabytes. <clears throat> Doesn't take too long these days. And uh, let's just go and have a look. Make sure that it's there in the downloads directory. There it is. <clears throat> let's do it like that. I'm going to open a new file browser window and <clears throat> I think I'm going to create a uh, new directory. I'm going to create a directory <coughs> called apps to put the uh, software in. So let's do mkdir apps like that. <coughs> Make sure it's there. Yes, it is. And then I'm going to uh, move the program that I just downloaded into the apps directory. I keep pressing the wrong buttons here. This is the button I want to press <laughs> on the virtual machine. So uh, let's just do a copy paste, control C to copy. <clears throat> then we go over here and uh, look for apps, which should be empty. OK, control V, copy it into there. Right, <clears throat> now I'm going to go back to the terminal and uh, CD to apps and do ls minus al, which will show the permissions, because this is not yet executable. <clears throat> so I need to do a chmod uh, plus x, and then capital R. And you can just type a tab to finish that, because it's the only one there. So that's done. Now I'm going to try running it. So let's do dot slash capital R tab. Oh yeah, <clears throat> needs Fuse to run. So uh, we will need to install Fuse. So to install Fuse, I'm going to do sudo apt install libfuse2. Let's see if this works. <coughs> Looking good so far. And then I'm going to try running it again <coughs> with a dot slash command. Let's see if it works this time. That is looking better. So this is the mesh chat program. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is to add the radio node interface to it. Um, at the moment, it has the default interface. This is like TCP IP <clears throat> to connect to other machines. What I'm going to do is add interface. And then um, it's going to be an R node. Let's give it a name. Um, Let's call it Helltech, <clears throat> so I know what it is. <laughs> Where is it located? This was USB 0, and there it is. You can see it, and that's a good sign. Uh, frequency, the usual one in Europe and UK, is 869.525 megahertz. And the... <clears throat> no, that doesn't work, does it? <laughs> 869, and then the 525 goes in here. OK, but it tells you up there what it's going to be. Good, <clears throat> the bandwidth that we use is 250 kilohertz and <clears throat> transmit power 22 dBm spreading factor. Let's have five for some high speed data transmission at 32 kilobits per second. Coding rate is five and not that one, but this one. Let's put the airtime limit 
that's 10, that means 10%, to stay within the regulations for the radio spectrum, ISM band, add it. <clears throat> so it's been added, now we have to restart. So we hit the button, restart, which takes us back to here, and then all I need to do is run it again. <clears throat> and hopefully the node, radio node will be activated, it'll turn into green. I can see the light flashing already the white LED means it's transmitting data on the radio interface so that looks good yeah connected 31 kilobits per second which is uh, reasonably fast for LoRa and um, we've been using this for testing uh, sending small files and images and so on webcam images which I'll show in another video so that seems to work um, how am I going to test it It'll take a while before it picks up any local nodes around me. Oh, that's come over the uh, default interface via the internet. Quite often I turn that off. Um, let's turn that off. <laughs> Disable it, default interface. Disable because this is a radio node only at the moment. You have to restart to implement the change and then start it again. <clears throat> Those messages look good about being configured and up and running for the radio node. So uh, here it is, messages, announces. What I can do is send an announce on a different machine. Hold on. Uh, that should work. Announce now. Bing, there it is. <clears throat> so I've just sent an announce from a, a different machine, which is on the same ISM frequency with the same spreading factor and so on, <clears throat> called X270B. Let's send a hello this way. Okay, delivered. And I can see at the other end it's arrived. <clears throat> so that's working. That's probably all I wanted to show in this video so far. So we've got a Proxmox server with a Ubuntu virtual machine on it, which has got reticulum mesh chat running on it. <clears throat> and it's connected to a radio node plugged into a USB port on the server that's been then passed through to this particular virtual machine. And it works. So um, Please make comments or ask questions and I'll see you in the next video.